Hello everyone. In this video, I'll provide you with tips to study IGCSE chemistry efficiently. I will help you to turn your grades from an average grade to an A star. Throughout this presentation, I will show you methods that you could possibly minimize the time you spend on chemistry and to maximize your gain of knowledge. These four steps I will show you today are based on my own experience. I've been teaching IGCSE chemistry for more than 18 years. I deliver this subject through my website, through online courses, and I also teach this subject in my school. Possibly more than 1,000 students have taken this subject with me, and I know exactly what are the best ways to learn IGCSE chemistry. I do get this question quite often. Students ask what science subject I should take. So if they are to take one science subject, it should always be IGCSE chemistry. Now, there are four main reasons why you should consider chemistry as your science subject if you're only taking one science. The reason is because the subject is quite short. So the number of topics you have in chemistry is far less than those you have in biology. Like in biology, you do have 30 topics. Here you only have 24 topics. So like there are six less topics in chemistry than biology. I do teach both subjects and I tend to finish chemistry much faster than biology. So first reason was the fact that it's the shorter subject. The second reason is because chemistry questions are more straightforward. So if you take, take a look at the exams of chemistry, you'll find many questions that are very, very straightforward, like this one here. They just ask you to recall information. So those questions are usually much easier to answer than questions that involve graphs and analysis. So that's another reason why you should consider this subject. The third reason why you should take chemistry as a subject is the fact that the questions in the exam are quite predictable. So if you take any exam paper and you compare it to previous years, especially if you have like an experienced teacher, he would be able to tell you what are the questions that come almost in every exam paper. There are specific topics in the syllabus that are very, very repetitive, and it makes it very easy to, for you or your teacher to predict what would come on the exam. The third, oh sorry, the fourth reason now I have is this one. Chemistry is actually getting easier. So if you take the latest syllabus by Cambridge, the 2023 syllabus, you find that is much shorter than the previous one. And you will find that they took away some of the most difficult parts of the older syllabus and they've canceled them out. I'm going to show you four important steps to learn IGCSE chemistry. The first step, the most important one, is understanding. There's no way you would memorize the concepts and expect to answer exam questions. Learning chemistry requires deep understanding of the concepts, so that's why you should start your learning process by understanding the knowledge rather than memorizing it. To start with, you need to have the right resources, so make sure your textbook or your notes follow exactly what's there in your syllabus. So if you're taking Cambridge exams, you must have a textbook of Cambridge and so on. I do get this question quite often. Which one should I use? Should I use the actual textbook from Cambridge or should I use notes like these notes I've made here? Now, textbooks are really good, but they have way more information than it's needed. So if you have a lot of time, you're only taking two subjects, then use the textbook because there is so much detail and some of those details you don't really need for your exam. But if you are short in time or if you're taking six, seven, eight subjects of IGCSE, you really don't have much time to read all of those extra details you have in the textbook. So try to find notes and try to find that notes are quite condensed to follow exactly what's there in the syllabus. Students tend to lose focus during the lesson. How can we remain on task while the lesson is happening? One of the best techniques to follow here is to have your textbook or notes open in front of you and keep track of every part of the lesson while using notes. So let's say the teacher is talking about Redux. You're following exactly the same talk on your textbook using these notes you have in front of you. It makes it much easier if the same teacher who's given the instructions has made the notes because he would probably follow the same instructions he has in his notes. Now, another thing is the practicals. 
chemistry is a science subject, so you really have to have lectures that explain those experiments. There's no way you would read or watch a PowerPoint and understand the experiments. Paper 6 or the practical part of exams rely on experiments, so unless you've seen or you try those experiments, you would never be able to answer experimental or practical questions. Now, when you have good understanding of the concept, that would make it very easy for you to memorize. A lot of chemistry relies on memorization, so if you have understood the concept, then that would make it easy for you to memorize, which is our next step. But when is the moment that you would realize that you understand the concept? If you are able to rewrite or you are able to explain it in your own words, that's exactly the moment when you understood the concept. Now that you understood the concept, you need to start memorizing information. Step number two depends on your ability to recall information that you have in your textbook. As you can see here in the Cambridge syllabus, you have 50% dedicated to knowledge with understanding. So this means that you need somehow to be able to write information that you've written in your notes or found in your textbook. For this step, everyone has his or her own way. So sometimes students write flashcards, sometimes students start to make their own notes. You need somehow to find the best way for you. I recommend to minimize the time you spend on memorization because your ultimate aim is to be able to solve exam paper. And while you're solving, you would actually memorize a lot of information. So for memorization, you should not stick in this step for too long because otherwise you would lose the time you would need to solve exam paper. I strongly recommend to use your notes, have the information all in one place, and in case you required to have any extra information, you can always put sticky notes. This means what? This means you have all of the information in one place and you're not missing any information because sometimes students, while they're making their notes, they will miss some of this information. Now that you've understood the concept and memorized the important information, it's time to reinforce your knowledge. This can be done by practicing exam papers. This is what's really good about the IGCSE system. It offers plenty and plenty of practice. If you could just get to a website that offers past papers, I'm going to leave a link to my website in the description. You'll find loads and loads of questions. Here you have to keep two things in mind. First thing is that you need to solve questions related to to that topic. So you have to find classified questions related directly to the lesson that you have taken. Now, let's say you have been learning about electrolysis, then the questions you're solving have to be directly related to this lesson. The second thing is that the questions have to comply with the latest syllabus. Now, the IGCSE system changes its content every six years. So you need somehow to pick and choose questions related directly to your syllabus. One last note is that you need to compare your answers to the right ones. So there's no point of you solving without checking your answers. You have two ways to do it. So ideally, you have to find solutions or written answers. This would help you a lot and it would save you a lot of time. The other method is to look at the mark schemes. Sometimes mark schemes are not really clear. So it would be much better if you have the drawings and the answers written by your teacher. The last note here is that you need to keep track of your mistakes. So always, always highlight or underline your mistakes. This will help you a lot when you come to the exam time to look at all of your mistakes and try to avoid them. This is the final step in learning IGCSE chemistry. This is the time when you're trying to link up all of the information you've had throughout the year. I usually start revising with my students three months before the exam. During that time, we make mind maps like this one I've made here for organic chemistry, and we solve full exam papers. Now, when you're solving full exam papers, ideally, you need to start with the older exams. So best thing to start with is the 2016 and move forward. 
older exam papers tend to be easier than the new ones. While you're solving the first two to three exam papers, you have to be nice to yourself. Don't force yourself to finish on time. So give yourself more time, or you can even have your notes open in front of you. This would help you to remember all of the important information. But when it comes to the last few exam papers, now let's say you're taking an exam in 2023, then you should Make sure you keep track of your time. You need to finish the exam right on time because many students have this problem on the exam day when they can't finish on the time. So you have to mimic the exam conditions the same time of the day and try to give yourself exactly the same time allocated in the actual exam. I'm going to leave a link in the description to my website. In the IGCSE chemistry section, you have all of the information you need for this subject, including the syllabus, the recent exam papers. Plus, you have a link to check the notes and the classified questions with their written answers. In addition, you have many important free lectures for you to watch.